Okay, guys, hope you're doing well. Let's conclude the chapter on, on costs and production with this last video, which is not going to be very long. Uh, and the, what we're going to talk about here is now we're going to look at the long run, right? So, so far, everything we've done so far uh, is done with the expectation that certain inputs are kept fixed because you cannot change them in the, in the short run, right? So, for example, uh, you know, we can hire more people, we can get more raw material, but we cannot change the, we cannot double the size of the store overnight. We cannot open up a different score, a franchise in a different city overnight. So those things take time. So now we're going to just analyze the same cost, uh, but we're going to assume that we can adjust everything. So that's the difference between short and long run. So make sure, or hopefully you remember that. Uh, what we said was it, the difference is that in the short run, there are certain inputs that are fixed. You cannot increase the size of your factory overnight. You know, maybe bakery, uh, you can go from short run to long run in about a month, but if you have big factories, you have, it takes you a long time. So now in this video, we're going to assume that all the inputs are variable. So that's going to be the difference is that there are not going to be any inputs that constrain you like they did in the short run. All right, so a couple of uh, definitions and then, then you know, we'll graph it and conclude. Uh, the, the, the equations are the same. We have the long run average cost, which is total cost divided by quantity. And then we have the marginal cost in the long run, which is a, the equation is the same. The difference is now we're just looking at long run. We don't have any fixed cost. So we don't have to differentiate between fixed and variable. And then uh, uh, marginal cost is change in total cost divided by the change in quantity. So the equations are the same. Hopefully you remember that, uh, but we're just putting it in a different context. We're looking at it in terms of long run and not short run. So economies of scale, now the next three slides uh, have, a, you know, we refer to them in the long run, uh, but it is related to what we talked about a few vid videos ago on returns to scale. So when we talk about increasing returns to scale, what we said was, as a firm hires more input, they are being more productive. The output they get goes up by a larger proportion. So now we're going to take that and apply it to what happens to costs. So economies of scale says that the long run average total cost will decline as the quantity of output increases. And this happens because your inputs are being more productive. So as you hire more people, if they are being more productive and you're paying them the same as the worker before, then your average total cost is going to decline. Your total cost will increase, but the average cost goes down. All right, and that happens because of specialization. People can be more efficient now because they can vary every input. Right? They can, if, if you hire more labor, you can hire another machine as well. You can open up another factory as well because that's what we mean in the long run. So increasing output is no longer constrained by fixed inputs like they were in the short run. And just to put it in terms of numbers, if you, in, if you want to increase quantity by 100%, total costs rise. They have to rise, but they'll rise by less. They'll rise by only 80% which means your average total cost is going to be declining. All right, so if you understand economy of scale, the other two should be fairly simple. Constant returns to scale just may, says that if you increase output, your costs are going to rise by the same proportion. All right, so each extra worker you're hiring is being equally productive as the previous worker. So think of the, you know, this example can be if you open up franchises in different cities, now you know, time is not a constraint. We can, you know, we can wait till we can open one. The cost will rise by roughly the same amount. Because unless you, you know, you're moving to a city which is a lot more expensive uh, in terms of opening up a store. So franchisee, uh, you know, they are usually subject to constant returns to scale. So here if you want to double your output, your costs exactly double. And the last case is diseconomies of scale, and this is related to decreasing returns to scale, which is where we said if you hire more inputs, they are being less productive. So when they are being less productive, but you're paying them the same amount as the previous worker, now your total costs are going to rise by more which means your average total cost is going to start rising. All right, so, and that's what we have here. And you know, th thinking in terms of this, when a company gets very large, it's very hard to manage it sometimes. You know, entrepreneurship, which is how efficient a CEO runs a company, now if you give him, you know, merge him with other companies and give him the same responsibilities, or if you're looking at a baker example, you know, a baker might be very efficient in running that bakery. But if they open up four bakeries in different locations and he's expected to run all four, then it's very hard to not run into the problem of managing it as efficiently. And in this scenario, if you increase quantity by 100%, the total costs are going to rise by more than 100%. So your ATC is going to rise, start to rise. All right, so one more thing before we graph it is to look at what implication this has on a business. So if a business is subject to economies of scale, that's a good thing. You might want to expand if that's the case because you're lowering your costs by producing more. You're lowering your average costs by producing more. If, if you're subject to constant returns to scale, it might still be okay to expand because your costs are rising proportional to how much more you're producing. But if you're subject to diseconomies of scale, then it's probably not a good idea to expand. 
unless you're expecting things to change in the future because your costs are going to rise by more than how much you're able to produce. So this is something, again, to keep in mind when you're making business decisions where you can adjust all your inputs. All right. Uh, okay, so let's just graph it. Again, the graph is going to look very similar to the uh, previous graph. We're going to have quantity on the x-axis. We're going to have costs on the vertical axis. And, you know, ATC, uh, average total cost. Now we have long-run average total cost and marginal cost in the long run. Long-run marginal cost and long-run... Uh, long run average total cost, it's still going to have the same shapes. There's one difference. This is the long run average total cost, and then your marginal long run marginal cost. The difference here is this is supposed to be the minimum of ATC. You know that from before. Uh, again, you know, ATC, and the difference is we, this is the same ATC as before, but it's in the long run, right? So it's the same curves as before. Now, so up till this quantity where ATC is declining, you're going to, the firm is experiencing economies of scale. So you produce more, your average costs are declining. And then you're going to have some proportion here where the firm experiences constant returns to scale, where if you increase output, your costs on average are not going to increase. And then eventually you're going to be subject to diseconomies of scale after that output. So that's, you know, graphically it looks very similar, but just try to understand what the difference is between short and long run. And then the other thing, just to make the connection is, if you're looking to produce some output, you can never do better in the short run than the long run, right? Because in the long run, you can adjust all your inputs. In the short run, you cannot. So this, usually, your short run costs are, you know, it cannot be lower than the long run costs, right? Because you cannot adjust all your inputs in the short run. So that is going to conclude this chapter on costs and production, which is a little technical chapter, but you have to be very thorough in it because the next two chapters is going to be based on your knowledge of this stuff. So the next couple of chapters we're going to talk about, now that we know what it costs to produce it, what is, the, is there any difference in what kind of market you produce? Right? So perfect competition or monopoly. If you're the only producer, do, do your decisions change as opposed to if you, if you are one of thousands of producers? So we're going to analyze that a lot more, but I'm going to be taking it for granted that you understand all of this, because this is going to be very relevant. So review all of these past few 10, 15 videos, and then we will start the next chapter in the next video.